Hello and welcome. Hope you're here for the Drexel build, our Minecraft recreation of our campus. The Drexel build actually started um, during the pandemic, but we're taking it forward this year. The Excite Center is sponsoring this year's activities, and we hope to recruit lots and lots of builders and crafters to add on to this world to keep it up to date and dynamic and, um, and really fun. But of course, the original project was started um, during the pandemic, so approximately spring of 2020, when several Drexel students got together, well, led by Max Eubenag, uh, to start the campus build from scratch. And what you see today is largely because of their efforts. And we'll be hearing from the founder, Max, very, very shortly uh, about how they've gone about this. This is just a snapshot of the world as it is today. This is running just you know captured in minecraft with some shaders so it looks a little bit nicer than out of the box but you can see that you know the vast majority of campus has been built most of the major buildings the academic buildings dorms classrooms um most of them are exteriors a few interiors though have been built as well so just really really incredible work done by um just a handful of drexel students for those of you who want to see a preview of the world without actually logging into Minecraft. There's actually a 3D preview that you can get on the web at this address, mc.excitecenter.org, port 7258 or colon 7258. This is the web plugin, which is a plugin called Blue Map. And you can see that not only is it sort of a 2D Google Maps view, it's actually 3D. Now it's a little slow because we're rendering on the web but you can see that you can actually pan around the world. As you get closer to the edges, it actually fills in renders. So this is a great way of just taking a look at the current state of the build and you know, sharing this with your friends or family or colleagues uh, who may not have uh, a Minecraft install, right? So they can just check it out and see what's there. All right, so this is always running off of our server and is up to date. Right, so if anybody makes changes in new builds, it's reflected in this website as well. Of course, if you actually have Minecraft and want to join, um, feel free to join us at any time. Um, this is the server address, mc.excitecenter.org, port 19132. That's not the standard desktop port, but that's so that we can enable even more people to join. And then lastly, for the project, our Discord server, uh, which you can uh, join at this address, bit.ly slash Drexel build. So with that, I am going to introduce really the founder of this project, Max Eubenag, who uh, recent Drexel alum is now gainfully employed. Max is, um, of course, uh, finished off his Drexel career and is now working full time. But thank you, Max, for spending a little time to contribute back to this project. Um, of course, you know, you're the founder and you and your friends and people who joined the project early on are really responsible for uh, building, you know, probably, uh, you know, 90% of the campus. So we'd love to hear from you about, you know, about your thoughts about the project and hopefully some, some tips uh, for those who want to continue building in the world. All right. Well, definitely this was a fun project to work on. And I think there's a, something special when you've been to Drexel's campus and then you see the Drexel Minecraft project and you see that everything's to scale and you see that everything is raised to the right point. Um, I prefer playing with shaders, so it's definitely interesting when the sun rises and sets and the right buildings produce the right shadows as they do in the real world. Um, so I do have my Minecraft open so I can show some elements. Okay, so in Minecraft, um, we're using obviously creative mode. We're not, you know, going out and getting all of these resources by hand. But um, one of the really interesting things about uh, Drexel in Minecraft is that everything is to scale. And we use some tools to help with the topography. So as you can tell from the dragon statue, if you were to look towards where the freshman dorms are, you can see that the ground raises up. So the streets are raised and the streets are to the correct width. Um, some other things that I'd like to show is that when it comes to buildings, um, what is it? We try to build them to height specifically. Um, it is worth mentioning that in 
Minecraft, each block is a meter cubed. So if you were to place this, this would be a meter tall. So by Minecraft standards, people are about two meters tall. Um, and depending on what tools you use, whether people want to use the tools that I use, which was Google Earth and the measure tool or something else, it's nice to know that um, just in the back of your head, a 3.4 um, feet to meter conversion rate. So it's best not to go with three feet to one meter it's best to like kind of change things up here and there um but obviously with minecraft um it does help to make things on a larger scale so that you don't have to place every block by hand um it is nice in my mind to start with the streets and then build outwards because if you build the streets topographically and you know that this edge of the greenery is higher than the others in one particular corner you can adjust for that as you make buildings within the street so i think having the street grid is definitely very helpful um you can see where the build stopped and how high we had to raise the ground from um where we started which was over when uh drexel crosses over with penn's campus um but so in helping accelerate the building process it's helpful to use a plugin that is enabled on the server called World Edit. And as you can see in the first slot, I have a wooden axe, which I'll get rid of. And if you type in the command slash slash wand, you produce a wooden axe, which is essentially just a voxel tool that helps you um, place blocks on a larger scale. Um, this was something that I made uh, last demonstration and didn't fully show. So with the, what is it? With the wand, you can left click and right click. Just These are just some World Edit basics and they select two positions. So if I left click, it says first position and then tells you the exact coordinates of that block. Um, and then you right click and it sets a second position. And where I left clicked and right click, this makes sense. So it tells you the measurement in the parentheses. So that's nine blocks. And if I click here to here, it tells me that the measurement of this edge is 10 blocks. So what it essentially does is it selects a um, three dimensional area and what I can do is if I wanted to change all those blocks to something else, I can do slash slash replace. And I'm just going to say um, stone bricks. And when you type in Minecraft blocks, make sure to underscore where there would be spaces. So it changed this to the block that I selected. And if you mess up or something goes wrong, you can slash undo and you can slash redo. So what I wanted to show here was if I click different corners, it produces a rectangular three-dimensional area. So if I were to select here to here, this is a um, 10 by 10 by 10 area. So of course it will show a thousand blocks. And then this three-dimensional uh, brick area is when I typed in slash replace and then a block type, it would just replace everything with that block type. But if I wanted to replace everything within a selection of a certain target, I can do slash slash replace and I'll select bricks specifically. And then I'll put something like uh, log. Uh, sorry. Let's, okay. Um, stone bricks again. So here I have this three dimensional area and it used to be bricks, but now it is um, stone bricks because I selected it within the three dimensional area. Um, so I'll go ahead and undo it. Um, one thing of note is that when you do these large areas, it's helpful to start out with like kind of sculpting a building by making it just a solid block type and then adding in details later. So an example I'll do right here is slash slash replace just the air with uh, sandstone. And so you can start off with this wall and then you can say uh, pull out some windows and maybe like in a building you're counting the windows or you're trying to replicate what's on Drexel's campus. So you put in these windows, you put in some window sills based on what pictures look like that you can find or even real life um, inspiration when you go there and look at the buildings for help. Um, I know that when I started this project, the Bentley entrance was not complete. So I had to send someone to take photographs because there weren't any online and we had to build it based on those photographs, which was really funny. <clears throat> um, Another thing I wanted to demonstrate is if you've played Minecraft before, you know that um, sand and gravel are affected by gravity, whereas other blocks are not. So if I were to replace these bricks with sand, you'll see that they fall down. They're affected by gravity. So if you replace them with blocks that don't that do fall, they will um, 
what is it they will be affected and one of the problems you want to you want to avoid is if you do slash undo it's going to replace back the blocks that are where they're supposed to be but you'll still have this sand left over so if something like this happens you want to keep the area you have selected and just replace the sand with what you with air so that it cleans it up and then you'll have the same um structure that you had before it kind of cleans up like that um and if builders want to explore other things one thing that they can do is um what is it this is based on the character location you can do cut and paste copy and paste you can do uh what is it uh circle or other things um forget how to do these i haven't done or uh slash line so i'll do here and i'll do here so it's going to be like a diagonal line slash slash line bricks and then it makes a diagonal line based on the trajectory of where i selected um so i guess around campus i'll show off some other things um some building tips it's really good if buildings look three-dimensional and they have a good depth to them. Um, as you can see with the armory, now the squash center, which this entrance needs to be updated, um, you can see that the walls are actually two blocks thick. So you have the bridge framing of the windows and then you have the glass blocks behind. So you're giving this depth of illusion. Um, the squash center is unfortunately empty in terms of the interior. But it's good to help with that. Um, what is it? Glass panes are good at producing that three-dimensional feel. Um, over here at Nesbitt, you can see that there are these like brick areas that are in front of the windows that I tried to recreate. Um, one of the things I wanted to show was the person who decided to tackle um, the study. They wanted to build it out of the gray concrete block or gray concrete powder, which is affected by gravity. So as you can see, when I place it, it falls down. But the funny thing is that what they ended up doing to accomplish this build is they use the uh, tripwire block and they placed it underneath of every sand block so that the entire structure <laughs> would not collapse. So this is honestly a really good effort by one of the builders that I honestly applaud. Um, some other things to check. Um, I will say that the Drexel project is, um, it did start with the Pen, Pencraft campus recreation project. And so we do share some of the same buildings just so we don't step over each other. Like we don't make a building so large, it takes over one of theirs. So we have some of their stuff over here, but in terms of the campuses, the two campuses can be reconnected. And I would definitely check with them if they've um, made progress on areas that people want to build on. So like Lancaster and say 38th Street, which is not charted out here, I would definitely check with them so that your measurements line up. Um, also with measurements, um, you can use slash wand to take measurements. So I'll do a measurement here. So let's say you want to know how long this city block is. Um, so I'm going to select this block and I'm going to go in a straight line and hopefully it won't go off on the measurement, but I'm gonna place a block here because as you can see, the ground sunk a bit and it will say that that is 168 meters long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into idle mode. I'm gonna open up this, I'm gonna go to Google Earth. And as you can see, I have the same uh, block pulled up. And when you have Google Earth open, um, actually, I think it's just sharing Minecraft. So I'm gonna go to sharing my entire screen. Okay, so you'll have this ruler tool to the left and it can help you measure out like the width of buildings. Um, as Google Earth is a 3D um, uh, program, you wanna be careful about how you make the measurements. So if you're taking them at the base of buildings, if you're too zoomed out, you might actually pick what is the corner of the top of the building. And if you measure that to the bottom, it's gonna be at an angle, so measurements won't be exact. But in Minecraft, I measured that this block was 168 meters. So I'm gonna select there. I'm gonna go all the way to the other side. And you'll see that it's approximately 161 meters, depending on where I take the measurement. But um, some areas have to be accounted for. In my mind, I would say that the areas that aren't to scale are the things that I would say don't really um, matter as much, like what people don't think about. So when you're building, if some measurements are a bit off, you can kind of hide the problems. Like back here, 
I would say if the measurements with the parking garage and the um, Thomas Klein Center are off, you can hide it in the back. Um, also, what else? Um, like I said, with the buildings, if I were to measure the, I, actually I'll go with parking garage. If I were to measure the distance of the parking garage, you'll see that there's like a kind of corner back there. So you kind of want to line up with it and then take that point and then measure out to here rather than just like starting here and then measuring like that. Because when I let go and then I zoom in, you'll see that I actually selected a point that was inside of the building when taking that measurement. Um, additionally, in Minecraft, um, you could see how roads were raised and lowered. Um, this is a tool that was provided by the Penn students when we were still building together. But essentially what this is, is it's a tool that shows um, each line is a foot in elevation or uh, de de-escalation. I'm sorry, I'm very tired after work. Um, but essentially when I was building the roads, you can kind of raise the road where, where you can see it in between of these lines and raise the block of that road by one block every three or four um, lines because 3.4 feet um, are a meter. Um, and also when it comes to Market Street, Chestnut Street, everything's a right angle. So it's very, um, it's easier to take measurements, but as we continue to expand up to the um, freshman dorms, you can see roads got a little um, diagonal. So it's definitely helpful to take uh, geometric measurements and try to recreate that in Minecraft and try to use the line tool where you can just so that um, you can kind of figure out where things are if you can't imagine it um, visibly in the world you can kind of picture it mathematically put it there and then adjust it as needed depending on what your application is um, I'm going to go back to Minecraft Um, and I will say that I am definitely more of an exteriors guy than an interiors guy. So a lot of buildings are unfortunately empty, but that does provide a lot of space for where people can go to build. Um, I will say when we had this project and we were using it for welcome week of 2020, we needed to build the necessary things to show off to, um, to incoming students. So one of the things that we built was the Cree Student Center. And I think when you go in here, you can kind of get a good grasp of what everything looks like. Um, obviously, the ground is elevated as you go into the Baracus Grand Hall. Um, but one thing that was really interesting to me was this is what it looks like in Minecraft. And when we were building it, of course, none of this was here. So we were uh, thinking, OK, we have to have the checkerboard ground. We have to have the carpet that transitions into hard floor. Um, but one of the things that's very interesting, uh, if I can change my game mode spectator, is that um, the if we actually found blueprints of the Cree Student Center, and the area that most people walk through is the same width in the back as all the back bathrooms and offices back here. And without thinking about that, if we were to build just the entrance first, then things wouldn't be to scale, and then things would be definitely very skewed. Um, I do have a, um, what is it, example of that actually, um, but it, it's kind of funny because we build all these back halls and it's hard, it, it's just kind of funny because they're all to scale, but we're not really sure what to do with them because a lot of us haven't been in these back rooms, um, and then you kind of see like the skeleton of the building, which is always fun to see. Um, I will say for people who aren't builders, it's nice to consider that if you choose to use iron doors instead of wooden doors, um, you should definitely put pressure plates or buttons so that people don't get locked around. And then they're like, I need help getting out of this building. I got locked in here. So when you're building, just always by um, instinct, put a block in front of and behind if you want to put pressure plates because they're kind of easier to hide. Um, and I'll go to another interior. Um, so one of the, I would say, crowning achievements of this build is definitely uh, the Drexel main building. Um, as you can see with the classical architecture, I definitely wanted to do sandstone because I thought that was the right tone for the building. But when you look into it, I kind of made these arches based on where there are arches in the um, picture. 
um, on this side of the wall, you can kind of see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13 um, arch patterns in Minecraft, but in the real world, I believe there are uh, 15 or 16. So it, it's a little bit off in terms of the window placement, but I think that when it comes to main building, it's sort of a repeating pattern. So you can get away with just putting it as is and then going really into on the details. Um, I swapped up a lot of the sandstone usage. Uh, personally, I'm more of a smooth sandstone user. So you can see down here into the walkway that I started by just making the wall a solid smooth sandstone. And then I added all these details as I went. Um, one thing I can demonstrate here is the copy paste tool, which I definitely think is very helpful. So I'm gonna select this uh, and then go up to here. And let's say that I wanted to continue this pattern I could walk here, type in slash slash copy, and it's based on where the player is located. So if this is one of the arch entryways, I'll just line myself up with the next one and paste it. And then it repeats the pattern further over. Um, and then, but um, since this is at the corner of the building, it's gonna mess up with the trim. So I'm gonna undo that. But it's helpful when you have like one thing that you want to repeat a lot of times. You could copy it and then paste it, have two, copy it, paste it, have four, and keep going. Um, the reason I came to Maine was because I wanted to show off the interior. So one of the problems uh, is that this area is definitely very pretty. Um, I loved coming here when I was a student on campus and going to the coffee shop, which I hope is open now because I really liked getting the black tie there. Um, which is a coffee drink. Um, but the problem is that I based most of, most of this interior off of the shots that they had of the interior from uh, the Drexel Press website and Google Images and all that. And a lot of the pictures I had to compare to the ceiling window. So the skylight. Um, so I built the skylight first and then sort of built everything else around it. And while it looks really beautiful, and I definitely think um, the side room should be fleshed out. The side rooms are kind of squished. So where there would be a lot of space for desks and chairs, I personally haven't been into every office building on Drexel's campus. Um, those rooms might be a bit smaller. And honestly, it's just kind of a balancing act because as each block is a meter, you're essentially making meter wide walls, which walls are obviously not that wide um, everywhere on campus. So you kind of have to balance how big you want to make things on the outside and then how small you want to make things on the inside so that it still looks to scale. Um, I'm trying to think of another building. Oh, um, there were definitely some very talented builders who on like when it comes to builders collaborating, I, I think mixing different types of building styles is really good because then everything starts to look the same if one person builds everything. So the people I one person built LeBeau, LeBeau um, business, and this building is definitely very diagonal, diagonal. So it looks different compared to a lot of the buildings that I made. But since I'm not an interiors person, someone else did the inside of LeBeau business. And when you go inside, you can see that they have a different type of building style when it came to recreating the, uh, what it looks like on campus. Um, and I definitely think when it comes to building Drexel, any of the key visuals that go around a lot, like the bio wall or the Drexel quad, I think it's good to get a good um, environmental space going so that you kind of feel like you're there, but virtually. Um, I'm wondering what else I should mention. Uh, Dr. Kim, if you have any suggestions, honestly, I, I just could talk about this for hours, but if you want me to mention anything in specific, you can point it out and I'll probably say something <laughs> no no it's it's awesome and we could listen to you talk about it for hours because it's just such incredible work um i guess maybe if you want to talk about like you know what goes into your your selection of a building i know you built so many buildings now but like if somebody were to, to get started and say hey i noticed this thing hasn't been built yet or you know what what's sort of an easier building versus a harder building or uh, in your mind um so I'd say it, like an easier, harder building is definitely Lebo business because it's very diagonal. There's a lot of windows. Um, the funny thing is that I notice when it comes to making buildings, if your building is diagonal, 
your windows, you can get around, get away with making them a lot simpler because you don't have to focus too much on the depth of the windows because you're alternating a diagonal wall, which is already more complicated than a um, static flat wall. Um, so the Pearlstein building, I believe this is the Pearlstein building. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Um, I, I saw it and I'm like, that's just a solid brick surface. So I wasn't really sure what else I could do with it. Um, so I just went with the solid brick surface. When I build personally, I like to balance blocks that look similar. So when it comes to bricks, I'll add polished granite as like an accent mark. But the problem with Pearl sign is when you look at this wall, which I'll stop sharing and then go to Google Earth, um, is that the Pearlstein building doesn't have like a brick accent. So it, it's just sort of like a solid brick surface. So I think it's important not to overbuild things. It's really easy in Minecraft to go really in on the details. And I feel like that's good when it's a large collection. So like maybe some small garden areas, you can go very detailed, alternate the flowers as they are in real life because you know they change that all the time. But um, one of the things was I made several buildings and I thought that I almost put too much effort into them. And then I was like, that doesn't remind me of the real life building. So I'd have to go back and simplify it. Um, if I were to make this as I wanted to make it, I guess, I would add what I call a trim. So it's like just the corner and I would replace it with polished granite because it's the same kind of color type. And then I'd add like that on both sides. So I'll do a uh, different selection and just paste that back in. And you can, it kind of like gives the illusion that this wall is more structured, even though in Minecraft, like you could stack any blocks together and it's a wall. So I, I think it's good to make buildings feel like they have weight and then kind of give them depth in a way that it looks supported, especially the taller buildings. Uh, so I will undo both of those because I just messed up the building. <laughs> um, Looks good though. Yeah. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah. So like here, um, I thought there were a lot of different kinds of uh, ferns in these kind of planter areas. So you can literally grab ferns and like alternate um, the greenery. So maybe there's like a collection of different grass blocks there. You could do that, but I went there in real life and they were all the same type of grass block. So that's why these areas are all similar. So it sounds like, uh, I mean, obviously it's still a scale build, right? One meter is one block, but that your overall goal and probably of the others who, uh, who worked on this, it's not to be absolutely faithful to you know the exact dimensions or the exact I mean it's, it's close but it's really about the feel of the building right does this actually remind you or feel like LeBeau does this actually feel like Pearlstein right yeah definitely um I mean I don't have shaders on right now because I didn't <clears throat> install Optifine for this um version but uh I will go to the tallest building that we built um and also, I know you're hosting this on a server where time doesn't pass by. Is that correct? Yeah, it's locked to daytime right now. Okay, so that's good for um, when you build because when you're inside and it's nighttime and you have shaders on, you can't see anything. So you kind of have to assume that when you're building, you're always building, I guess you would call it around noon time. But like, for example, when it came to Summit, um, when you build with all the shadows, it helps to show that the entrance to the Chipotle and unfortunately the former Starbucks, um, that these areas down here are darker. So it kind of gives a depth of what is um, where each area or the kind of light levels in each area. Um, for Lancaster Walk, I know that under the trees is definitely a bit darker. So you kind of have this lit area where I put these uh, sea lanterns as the uh, light posts. And then anywhere that wasn't the main pathway would be kind of darker to the side because that's how it is on campus. Yeah, well, that's a really good point. And when you were talking about it earlier about, you know, seeing the sunrises and sunsets and all that, I was thinking, huh, yeah, we should really turn the time back on <laughs> because right now we, we kind of locked it here just so that everybody who joins gets to see, you know, see the extent of it, right? Um, but no, that's a really good point. So we'll, we'll turn that back on at some point. 
yeah i it playing minecraft is definitely weird because um when it comes to recreating real life you make lanterns and light posts um as they are in the real world but when it comes to minecraft um light only goes out so far so when you put it to the scale of real life there will be dark areas in minecraft at night where there aren't in the real world so when i play minecraft in survival i tend to overlight everything just because i don't want mobs spawning um but i'm wondering if it would be worth investigating going into old buildings and kind of overplacing light like hiding sea lanterns as they're kind of this neutral aquamarine color just to light up buildings a bit more because i think it'd be kind of archaic if you went into the deck and it was pitch black at night and you're like oh i know how we light that how about we just line the walls with flaming sticks because that's how it is exactly in the real world (laughs) (laughs) right wow well again this is really amazing max and uh you know i think in watching you present about this, I hope people who are watching this get the sense of just how much work went into this, how much work and how much thought and consideration. Um, and you did almost all of this when you weren't allowed back on campus, right? So yeah. you were doing this from Google Earth and from photographs and things like that. I mean, now this year with students back on campus, I think this is an incredible opportunity because you had to do interiors based on like, you know, whatever floor plans you can get and memory. Right? Yeah. Uh, and now students can actually go into those rooms and you know, see for themselves and of course take some photos and things like that. So I think that's a tremendous opportunity um, uh, for, for people who want to build this year. Uh, I guess I also wanted to ask you uh, about, I mean, obviously the, the rectangular buildings right most of them are lined up with the street grid and those are a little more straightforward um i have to imagine to do something like lebeau or summit uh you know that's a lot of um uh, facility with world edit right knowing exactly okay i need this angle to this angle and i'm going to do this wall and it'll kind of map out that wall for you right yeah i mean just like a little bit of um knowledge i will say that in building summit i wanted to separate the um the glass part from the i guess you could call it like stone kind of part um so i built this entire front area by hand based on pictures and i had to cut the alternation of colors uh just so that it would fit um but the funny thing is that in doing so i found that this has a pattern where it's like a B, B, C, A, B, B, C, and then it just copies and pastes all the way to the roof, which then it changes. Um, So it's definitely nice to look out for small details like that and add them to the build. So it definitely feels more lifelike. Yeah. No, it's it's just truly awesome. And and I hear you about shaders. I was just trying to run shaders in the background here and it was killing my machine and I couldn't, you know, I, my, my frame rate went to nothing. So, um, but it looks beautiful when you have, you know, some like silver shaders or something, uh, going on. Okay. Well, again, that, I mean, that was fantastic. And, uh, uh, maybe if you think of other things, feel free to hop back in. I'm going to wrap up with just a couple other points before turning over to Laura to talk about our community outreach aspect. All so right. um, I, I will just say that um, if you do join the discord, if you want to ping me with questions or if you want to DM me and just be like, well, what would you do for this? Or like, what's something that you didn't finish um, that, you know, you want to tackle as like a first project, definitely reach out to me. Um, I'll, I'm still interested in helping out. I just don't know if I can spend like five hours a day, every day, like the, I did during the pandemic, but I definitely would like to continue to work on this project, maybe from a different type of role than I used to. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for sharing, sharing your knowledge, sharing your vision around this and all that hard work. It really is incredible. A lot of what Max talked about, we've tried to capture into a web tutorial as well with some screenshots using Google Earth to figure out uh, to do measurements uh, and elevation um, uh, using the the topographic map uh, from Penn State to kind of figure out elevation. We've expanded the street grid just a little bit uh, over the past few weeks. So there's a few more opportunities to, to build in city blocks. Uh, so that's captured on this website, excitecenter.org slash Drexel build. And then, so if people actually want to get started with building, I mean, you know, it's open to anybody in spectator mode right now, 
But the quick sort of how to get started is, of course, join our Discord first. But uh, then look at the list of buildings. Um, this is a document that Max and his colleagues started. We've taken it over. Uh, see if there's a building that's still not complete there or uh, that you want to add your name to. Or if there's a new building that it's not on that list, feel free to add it. Uh, and then go back to Discord and request access um, on the channel building requests. Uh, we'll try to be as responsive to that as possible. Uh, if there is no movement on a claimed building, we may put it back into the pool. Uh, just You can't just grab a building and squat on it for a year. Uh, and of course, the general channel is there for everyone who um, wants to chat about anything. Uh, one thing I'll add is, of course, everyone can join in spectator mode right now. Uh, the first step is once you get in touch with us, we will give you creative mode access, right? We'll enable that for you. Uh, but you won't be allowed to actually build anywhere until you claim a building and we use WorldGuard to give you permissions to build in that area, right? So it is a multi-step process, but that's just to make sure that even by accident, nobody's great work, you know, gets accidentally damaged or destroyed. So now very quickly, I'm going to turn it over to our AmeriCorps VISTA fellow, Laura Sato, who is doing a year um, internship uh, at, at Drexel University, uh, working on community engagement, particularly around civic technology. And so she's going to tell you a little bit about how those civic technology engagement efforts work and opportunities to get involved through this Minecraft project. And take it away, Laura. Thank you. Hi again, I am Laura Sato. I am the American for VISTA for Digital Inclusion at Drexel University. Um, so I'll be working with Drexel and the Excite Center for a little bit over a year. Um, so really like the, the, um, the community engagement aspect of Excite really starts from um, President Fry and his when he was became president, he wanted to become the most um, civically engaged campus in the nation. Um, so Excite really took that on and with the combination of a couple of things really started to become um, working towards civic engagement. So um, the Excite Center works a lot with the West Philadelphia Promise Zone, um, which is what Drexel is located within. It's a um, designation that was made by the Obama administration um, in 2014. And the, the aim is to really reduce poverty in those areas um, by really allowing for um, existing organizations to work within the communities to really help um, help provide um, education initiatives, jobs, affordable housing and health services and other things. Um, so really we see this project as a way to kind of like jump off and kind of use this as a community engagement um, project as well. So there are a couple of ways you can get involved currently um, with this Minecraft project at Excite. So the first way you can really get involved is by um, if you have like work study hours or if you have or if you are in part of the Drexel Community Scholars Program that is um, sponsored by the Lindy Center for Civil Engagement. Um, this is a leadership program for students um, that where students provide service hours to nonprofit organizations. Um, it's typically five to 15 hours per week. Um, and it can either count as community service hours or it can work or to go towards working as work study hours as well. And the Excite Center actually has two current opportunities for Drexel Community Scholars. Um, the first one being the Digital Navigators Program, um, which is a program at Drexel that works towards providing tech support and technology to the West Philadelphia community, the community that Drexel is within um, via a, a warm hotline. And the other one is um, called the Microsoft, um, Minecraft Community Build Assistant. And I will work with this project to kind of develop it more and see how um, the Minecraft um, Community Build can really go towards being more of a civic engagement project, which we hope eventually will be. Um, another opportunity is that in November, we're gonna start a SLAMS mini course on teaching um, middle schoolers nearby about um, Minecraft and that will start in November and we will and the Excite Center will also be hiring an instructor for that so there is an employment opportunity there as well so if you'd like to get involved please contact um, please contact the Excite Center you can contact me 
or you can contact um, Young Moo or anybody at the Excite Center to really start getting that process started. Because there's a lot of ways to get involved within this project and in civic engagement within the Excite Center as well. Awesome, thanks, Laura. So uh, just to reiterate, I mean, of course, students can get just involved with the project, right? You can just join the server and you can build, right? And, and we'd love for you to do that. Uh, then there are extra opportunities for those who, for example, are becoming Drexel Community Scholars, the, the Lindy Center, um, those who are doing, uh, want to do more civic engagement hours in, during their Drexel careers, um, those are additional opportunities, right, where you can actually work <laughs> uh, doing some of this Minecraft building uh, as a form of community outreach. So whether that's going to be working with others to expand the build into West Philadelphia, Right now, the world kind of ends at 36th Street, so we'd like to go beyond that. Uh, or particularly working with kids, working with middle schoolers at, at Science Leadership Academy Middle School, that's what SLAMS is, um, where we teach them once a week starting in November, uh, and we're gonna, they have a brand new building this year that was constructed with the help of Drexel at around 36th um, and Filbert Streets, and um, that brand new building right does not exist in our minecraft campus so we're gonna try to work with those middle school students and teach them how to actually build their building in you know in our world uh and and obviously they'll learn a lot about minecraft if they don't know already and they'll learn about you know a lot about building realistic scale models in minecraft so that's another fantastic opportunity and that instructor position again will be a paid position so you can again get paid, you know, to do something hopefully you really really enjoy, which is building in Minecraft. I think that covers all our bases. Again, um, well, my thanks so much to Laura and particularly to Max. Uh, Max has been so generous in sharing not just you know uh, the tutorial, but information about the project, background, you know, so much of this context, which um, again uh, is so important for carrying the project forward and. I think, you know, I, I hope, Max, you uh, you do stay involved. I hope uh, that from afar, even though you're in Maryland, you're not like distressed about where the project is going. Hopefully it's in good hands and that we keep it running, you know, in, in, uh, in a good way, in a good way. Um, so let's see, any final thoughts, anything come to mind for, for our students, particularly? those who want to get involved so I guess just thank you for um having me around and I don't think I could have uh picked a better group of people person to uh take care of the project than the excite center thanks we like taking on uh on, on difficult projects <laughs> uh no this isn't gonna be uh, this is uh just side note I mean you know I think Max I reached out to you you know, probably sometime mid 2020, because uh, I've been following the project and was, you know, right away, I could see, oh, my God, this is incredible, what, what you guys have been doing. So um, I'm happy to highlight that and showcase that. Um, one final thing I should have mentioned at the beginning is that this has already been used by Drexel admissions and enrollment, right, for to showcase the university for virtual tours and open houses. Right, it's been an incredible tool. I mean, obviously during the pandemic, it was it was fantastic to have any kind of um, access to you know even a virtual campus, but now to be able to showcase it not just as hey here's our campus, but this is the work of Drexel students, right? That they did this, they came together, did this on their own, and are now um, sort of giving it in a way back to the campus community. I think is amazing and fantastic. So with that, thanks again, Max. Thank you, Laura, and uh, reach out, join our Discord server and reach out if you have any questions.